Welcome to another video lesson on Lewis dot structures. In this video, we're going to focus on expanded octets and resonance structures. So for this video, we're going to define expanded octets, identify which atoms can, be, can form expanded octets, identify which atoms are stable with less than eight valence electrons, define resonance structures, and then learn how to diagram those resonance structures using Lewis dot structures. While most atoms want to fulfill the octet rule, or to have eight valence electrons to become isoelectronic with a noble gas, there are a few atoms that can actually handle more than eight valence electrons. And when we have an atom that can take more than eight valence electrons, we call those expanded octets. And most of those atoms that can handle more than eight valence electrons are located in the third period or higher. So let's take a look at one of those examples, sulfur tetrafluoride. So our approach to drawing Lewis dot structures for expanded octets is going to be the same. So our very first step is to find the compound formula. So for sulfur tetrafluoride, that's going to be SF4. And then I need to calculate the total number of valence electrons. So each of my sulfurs has six valence electrons and each of my fluorines has seven valence electrons for a total of 34 valence electrons in this compound. So sulfur is going to be my center atom. So I'm going to place sulfur in the middle and place all four of the fluorines around my sulfur with uh, connected with single bonds. We'll try placing our single bonds first. So I've placed eight valence electrons. So 34 minus eight is 26. So I have 26 left to place. So I'm going to fill up all of my fluorines with the remaining six uh, valence electrons that they need. But once I finish with that, I actually have only placed 32 electrons. So I have two more electrons left to place. So since sulfur is in the third period or higher, we know that it can actually handle more than eight valence electrons if needed. So I'm going to put those additional two valence electrons right onto my sulfur. So in this case, my sulfur will actually have 10 valence electrons, which is okay because sulfur is big enough to handle having more than eight valence electrons. So the additional step that we can add to our instructions for drawing Lewis dot structures is step eight. If there are leftover electrons, place them on the central atom. So if we have additional electrons to place, but all of our atoms have their eight valence electrons, any additional electrons needed to be placed will be placed on the central atom, as long as it's in the third period or higher. So while there are some atoms that can be expanded octets and take more than eight valence electrons, there are also those atoms that are too small to handle having eight valence electrons. The rule of thumb is that carbon and any larger atoms will fulfill the octet rule. And boron and smaller atoms don't need to fulfill the octet rule to be stable and can have less than eight valence electrons. So one example of this is boron trichloride, or BCl3. So my boron has three valence electrons. My chlorines each have seven valence electrons for a total of 24 valence electrons. So I'll place boron in the center with my three chlorines around it, connected by single bonds. And then I'll finish out the octet rule for each of my chlorines. And once I've done that, I've actually placed all of my 24 valence electrons, but boron only has six valence electrons, but because it's so small, that's all it needs to be stable. So this Lewis, Lewis dot structure for boron trichloride is actually complete as is. The final topic of this video lesson are resonance structures. So Lewis dot structures are not always a complete representation of all possible arrangements for the valence electrons in a molecule. And to understand what I mean by that, let's take a look at an example, sulfur dioxide, with the formula of SO2. So I'm going to do my Lewis dot structure for sulfur dioxide. So my sulfur has six valence electrons. Each of my oxygens have, also have six valence electrons for a total of eight valence electrons. And when I draw the Lewis dot structure out, I have my sulfur singly bonded to one oxygen and doubly bonded to the other oxygen is the only way I can make this Lewis dot structure work so that all of my atoms have eight valence electrons. 
But in this diagram, I have my sulfur doubly bonded to the right oxygen. Well, why would my sulfur be doubly bonded to the right oxygen and not the left oxygen? Well, this is where our resonance structures come in because our sulfur won't always be doubly bonded to the right oxygen. It may sometimes be doubly bonded to the left oxygen. So when I have a molecule in which I can have multiple arrangements of my bonds, I'm going to need to draw what are called the resonance structures for each of the possible arrangements for my multiple bonds in a molecule. So all resonance structures show is how the, all the possible arrangements for my multiple bonds and my valence electrons in a molecule. So to indicate and show resonance structures, we need to draw out all possible resonance structures for a molecule and then separate them by a double headed arrow to show that these are all the possible arrangements of multiple bonds and valence electrons in a molecule. So the final step in constructing Lewis dot structures is step nine. If there is more than one possible Lewis dot structure, draw all resonance structures out and separate them with a double arrow. And that concludes our video lesson on Lewis dot structures, expanded octets, and resonance structures. Please bring your notes and any questions you have with you to class.